horns up and welcome to a brand new episode of Headbangers Kitchen. Today's recipe is neither keto nor is it low carb. And if you're going, what? Well, that means you missed the memo. So click here on the i button and watch my latest video. Anyway, what are we cooking up today? We are going to be cooking up some chicken broccoli rice. Yeah, now chicken broccoli rice is the food of bodybuilders and if I'm being honest, most of the times I've seen them cook it up, it looks pretty bland and boring. But chicken broccoli rice is one of my favorite things to eat and it's one of the things I've been eating currently. In fact, it's been about six months and I just can't stop eating it. That's because I've given it my own spin inspired by Hainanese chicken rice. And trust me guys, if you've never eaten Hainanese chicken rice, you are missing out. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let me show you how I meal prep my chicken broccoli rice. For this recipe, I am going to be using a full chicken with skin, which makes me five days worth of food. You can use chicken without the skin if you want to reduce the fat content, but I'm okay using the skin as fat gives a lot more flavor to the food. And it makes me want to actually eat it regularly. So make sure your chicken is at room temperature and fully defrosted if it was frozen and then you want to season it with some salt. I will season it inside the cavity and I'll also pretty much give it a good rubbing down with salt all over the body. I want you to imagine that you are a personal masseuse and the chicken is your client and you are giving it a sensual salt massage. Anyway, once you've done that, set the chicken aside for about 15 minutes. Next, we're going to weigh out 150 grams of rice, which makes me enough rice for 5 days according to my calorie requirements. Now, I am just using regular basmati rice. I enjoy the taste, but you can use any rice you like. Just remember the cooking time will vary according to what rice you use. Now, you want to make sure that you wash the rice properly under running water. You want to do this till the water pretty much runs clear. It's very important to wash your rice, otherwise you will have to answer to Uncle Roger. Now just let that rice soak while we prepare the other ingredients. I'm going to take some ginger and peel it using a spoon. This is an easy way to get the skin off without taking off too much of the ginger itself. Then once you have done that, you want to just cut it into big chunks. We're going to be using this to flavor our chicken stock and of course ginger has a lot of health benefits too. Once that is done, I'm going to take a spring onion and just chop it into big pieces. Again, this goes into flavoring our chicken stock. Next, I add a cup of water to my instant pot and then I add in the ginger and the spring onions as well. I place the trivet inside the instant pot and then I put the chicken on top of that. Now I just close the lid and turn the pressure knob to the seal position. Set the instant pot to pressure cook at a high pressure for about 14 minutes. Now for the chicken cooking time, I use 6 minutes per pound or per half kilo of chicken and since mine is about 1.2 kilos, that's about 14 minutes. Now while that is cooking, I am going to prep my broccoli and I am just going to separate the florets from the stems and I want about 500 grams of raw broccoli, so that's about 100 grams per day. Now I often swap out the broccoli for mushrooms or pork choy and sometimes even for peas and carrots. Honestly, any vegetable will do. So if you aren't a fan, you can swap out the broccoli, no problem. And of course, you want to make sure that you wash the broccoli under some running water. And of course, you can use frozen broccoli as well for this recipe, no problem. Now just wait for your chicken to finish cooking and once the 14 minutes is done, you want to give it 10 minutes of natural release, after which you can release the pressure if any and remove the lid. And you should have a beautifully cooked chicken along with a delicious flavorful chicken stock. Now using a pair of tongs, you want to remove the chicken and you want to make sure to tilt it and let all the juices from inside the cavity flow out into the instant pot. You want all those delicious chicken juices in the stock. And now you just want that chicken to rest and relax. Let it feel like it's on vacation. So set it aside now. Once the instant pot has cooled a bit, you want to strain out that stock. 
and you can discard the ginger and the spring onions now. You also want to pour any resting juices from the chicken into the stock as well. Once the stock has been sitting for a few minutes, you will see that the fat has floated to the top. You will see a visible layer of it. Now you just want to get a ladle or some kind of spoon and scoop out as much of the fat as you can from the top. We're actually going to use some of this to cook the broccoli. And don't worry if you can't get all of it out. Remember, fat is flavor. Also, if you use chicken without skin, you won't have much fat here. Anyway, set aside that fat for now. This is also a good time to taste the chicken stock for seasoning because we want a nice and salty stock. So if yours feels under seasoned, then add some salt to it. Mine definitely needed some salt. We're going to use this stock to cook the rice. That's why it needs the salt. Now it's time to drain that water our rice was soaking in and then put the rice in the instant pot. You want to make sure that you get every last grain of rice in. Waste nothing. And then in goes the chicken stock. So the ratio of rice to liquid when cooking basmati rice in the instant pot is 1 is to 1. Since we used 150 grams of rice, we want 150 ml of chicken stock. Then give it all a good mix so the rice is spread evenly in the pot. Put the lid on. The vent goes to sealing position and then pressure cook on high pressure for 3 minutes with a 10 minute natural release. Now while the rice cooks, we're going to quickly cook up our broccoli and I'm going to get my wok on the stove and heat up some of that chicken fat. Remember, even if you use a full tablespoon, that's divided by 5 portions so it's not really a big deal. Anyway, once that fat is nice and hot, throw in that broccoli and season it with a bit of salt and then give it a quick toss in the pan after which we are going to add some of that chicken stock maybe like a hundred ml or so of it and then i'm going to cover it and kind of let it steam i'll also open it up give everything a good mix i'm going to add some more water because i kind of want to boil and steam the broccoli at the same time and now you're going to cook it till it gets nice and tender remember to keep lifting the lid checking it giving it a good mix now normally i would just boil the broccoli in the chicken stock after the rice is cooked but since i was a bit impatient i decided to cook it like this anyway now you just want to cook it till it's done to your liking some people want their veggies to have a little bit of bite other people like it nice and mushy i like it somewhere in the middle Anyway, now my broccoli is done to my liking and it's ready. Now you just want to get out your kitchen scale, put a bowl on it, take your broccoli and put it in that bowl and weigh the entire portion. Now this is about 486 grams in total. So I divide that by 5 which is the number of days and that gives me about 97 grams of broccoli per portion. Now it's time to check on the rice which is also done and voila! It's done and ready and it looks so good. I think Uncle Roger will approve. Please go and let him know that I'm waiting for his approval. Anyway, fluff up that rice with a fork or should I say fork up that rice and just look at it. Perfect rice every single time flavored with the flavor of a single dead chicken. Basically, this is delicious chicken flavored rice. Anyway, now it's time to weigh out the rice as well. And that's about 386 grams of rice, which if you divide by 5, gives you 77 grams of rice each day, which is perfect for me. But again, if your macros demand more or less, make it accordingly. Now to store my meals, I just use these plastic containers. But if you are buying new containers, please buy glass ones. These are just takeout containers that we get food in. So I don't throw them away. I just reuse them as much as possible. Of course, since I eat at home, I don't microwave these plastic containers. I just put food on my plate and microwave it. Anyway, time to start packing. But before that, we have to carve up the chicken. Now, what I like to do is break down the chicken into two full legs, two breasts and then a random pile of meat, which gives me five days worth of chicken. Now, since my filming setup is not very conducive to be able to carve this bird properly because the tripod is in front of the cutting board, I always struggle to do it on camera. So I recommend you watch some fancy cooking channel to know how to carve a chicken properly. But basically, I cut out the legs first. 
or in this case I just break them off and then I also take out the chicken oyster which is right near the leg I break off the wings in fact I pretty much just break apart the entire carcass so since I've separated the crown of the chicken which holds the breasts I take the breasts off by slicing down the middle and since this bird is cooked so well pretty much it just comes apart from the bone like super easy it comes apart from the bone as you can see I've got two legs and two breasts so I put one piece of chicken in each of my containers and now what I'm going to do is take the rest of the carcass and pull off as much meat as I can so from the wings from the back etc etc you should easily get about a hundred grams of meat which is perfect and then that goes into my box as well now I'm going to turn the instant pot back on and hit the saute function and then in goes the chicken carcass with all the bones that are there. It's time to take the chicken stock and turn it into a bone broth so it's packed with all the goodness of the chicken, lot of nutrients in it. Anyway just get a bit of color on that carcass, saute it for a bit and then you want to pour in the remaining chicken stock and also add in some more water depending on how much broth you want. I want about half a liter of broth so that's about 100 ml a day. Anyway, shut the lid, pressure cook it now on a low pressure for 30 minutes and then you're sorted. Oh, and don't forget to turn the pressure knob to the seal position. Okay, now it's time to pack the meals. So get your box on the scale, make sure that you've reset it to zero so you get a correct reading and then add in the rice and the broccoli. Anyway, I have to measure out about 77 grams of rice and 97 grams of broccoli per box of mine. And I'll do this for all 5 of my boxes. And ta-da! My meal prep is like 99.99% complete and ready. And tell me, doesn't that look like the most appealing chicken broccoli rice ever? And you know what? It will get even better. Just wait for my secrets at the end of this video or actually in like a minute from now. Anyway, shut the lids on these boxes and then you can store them in the fridge and you should be fine. Now my fridge is at 3 degrees Celsius and I can keep this for up to 5 days. If you are paranoid, feel free to put it in your freezer instead. Okay, so now my chicken broth is ready as well and I've extracted all the nutrition out of these bones and it's time to strain the broth and this is just a flavor bomb and it's what I'm going to pour over my chicken rice and broccoli and eat it and this is so much good stuff in this broth right here now normally I would also boil my broccoli and other vegetables in this but I already told you I was impatient so I cooked it in the wok anyway now you can just put this in its own box and put it in your fridge as well now all these leftover bones you can discard them but since I grew up being told never to waste food I'm literally going to clean these bones of all the meat on it. I'm also going to eat the chicken neck as a snack off the camera but yeah just look at how much meat I was able to pluck from these bones. This is enough for a small sandwich so that's going to be my snack today as well. So be resourceful and use every bit of that bird. Now I have two secret ingredients that I use when I'm eating my chicken rice. One of them is toasted sesame oil and don't worry we only use two to three drops so it doesn't add too many calories. And the second is a dark soya sauce which just adds that umami flavor to everything. But honestly you can use any soya sauce that you like and again it doesn't have too many calories in it. Okay now let's talk about how to reheat and eat this chicken broccoli rice. You can do the basic boring way which is transfer everything to your plate because unless you are using glass containers you do not want to microwave the plastic containers. So put it in a plate and microwave it for about 1-2 to two minutes till it's hot and for the broth you want to do the same. Take it out in a small bowl and look how jiggly it is. It means you got all the gelatin from the bones in there. And yeah just microwave the broth as well and then it's ready to eat and make sure you use the soya sauce and the toasted sesame oil with it or you can do it the way I like to do it get a non-stick pan on the stove and place your chicken piece skin side down in the pan we are looking to get the skin to render out some more fat and to basically crisp up you want a golden brown chicken skin and make sure that the chicken is at room temperature otherwise it will be cold in the middle and once the skin has gotten nice and golden brown 
flip it over and just let it cook for about 30 seconds so it warms up and wow that skin looks absolutely gorgeous anyway remove the chicken from the pan and now you want to add in your chicken stock and that's going to start to bubble away and into the stock i will add the rice and the broccoli and give it all a good mix what will happen now is the broccoli and the rice will absorb that stock and it's going to make it even more delicious and the flavors will intensify then i'm going to add in half a teaspoon of my soya sauce and give everything a good mix now you can keep this as soupy as you like you can serve it to yourself in a bowl right now all nice and soupy or you can cook it a bit more and make it drier but i am happy with where mine is now so it goes on to my plate and of course i will finish it with about two to three drops of that sesame oil and this is going to be absolutely delicious and this is one of the ways i like to reheat and eat the chicken broccoli rice now on to method two get your pan on the stove add in your chicken broth then into the broth you're going to add the soya sauce give it all a good mix and you've got like a soya sauce broth now and then into that goes everything the rice the broccoli and the chicken and of course don't forget to give it all a good mix and once again let it cook so that everything gets warmed up and like i said earlier cook it longer if you want it drier or leave it nice and soupy i like it reasonably soupy because it's so much more moist and juicy that way it's comforting like a big warm hug anyway don't forget to finish it with a few drops of that toasted sesame oil for that flavor punch and then just remove it on a plate and oh man that's some chicken broccoli rice to die for and that is my second way of how to reheat and eat the chicken broccoli rice and that's it folks chicken broccoli rice that you will look forward to eating every single day a recipe that's delicious and flexible and i really hope you will make it and i hope you will enjoy it as much as i do all right folks it's time to taste the chicken broccoli rice and if any of my keto or low carb viewers are still watching first i want to say thank you and then i want to tell you to click here on the i button and check out my keto chicken rice recipe you're gonna love it anyway enough jibber jabber time to taste i can't wait to dig in mm. this plate of food is like a warm hug mm. it's warm it's delicious it's homely it's comforting the lovely chicken the rice the broccoli the sesame oil it just takes it up a notch and the soya sauce it gives it that umami i mean there's a reason i've been eating this for like six months straight now and i absolutely love this it still tastes just as good and yeah i'm gonna go and enjoy this now because it's time for lunch and this is my lunch anyway i will see you on the next episode of headbangers kitchen until then cheers and keep cooking hey folks if you enjoy the music i make i've got some super badass merchandise of my music and i'll leave the links to order it in the video description box just below this video anyway if you want to check out some of my music click here and watch a song of mine or click here and watch some more recipes